Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So it just occurs to me that you can actually see my reflection in the shrink wrap on the box. I'm a bit annoyed about that, but nevertheless we shall persevere. Um, so for everyone who's holding out for that, or like maybe two or one of you, grats, but also get a better hobby. Anyway, um, so yeah, today I'll be, well not today, over the course of a couple of week, week, a week or so building time, I'll be building this Sherman Armoured Platoon from um, Battlefront Miniatures, specifically the British Sherman um, Platoon, which is a mix of, well, a multi-model uh, kit that can build either a Sherman Firefly or a conventional Sherman 5 um, medium tank. So to start with, we'll start getting our pieces off the sprue. Now you can see me just working away there with a the sprue cutter. So we'll start with a hull and um, just get all the pieces of that um, out assembled and we'll start doing some test fits. Though I have to say, as as far as kits go, these Battlefront kits are some of the simplest and easiest I've ever put together. They've nicely keyweighed all the parts. It's very, very hard to get wrong. You just have to pay attention to the instructions on the back of the box to make sure you're building the um, correct mark of tank. So. After I liberate the parts from the sprue, I'm going back with a um, far, well a sanding stick to basically start cleaning up and smoothing out the um, actual um, cut points on the sprue. Um, I use scale model sanding sticks, though I frequently actually have started using um, the sanding sticks or emery boards, I suppose, that you can buy in the cosmetics section of your local cosmetics supply store or chemist or so on. Um, they're much cheaper and they have just about the same effect. The only difference is that they don't aren't necessarily a um, a soft material, so you can't bend them around curves, which might be useful for vi for projects like this. So yeah, now that we've got the hull done, that's a fairly universal part. I'm then going to um, select the appropriate. Um, front glasses on the hull for this vehicle and since I think this first one was a Sherman Firefly I've selected the appropriate part and have um, well not glued it on obviously but I've basically done my test fitting because this is the first pass for assembly um, but yep now that I've already done done the test fitting I'm going ahead with my I believe that's Tamiya quick dry cement and I'm just coating all of the surfaces uh, both sides um, that are the both contact points with said cement and then sticking it all together so that should hold it pretty nicely and then of course the front glasses on which just pops on like that so yeah very simple process these models are some of the simplest i've ever made so it's really hard to screw these up it's not nowhere near the complexity of a larger scale model or even having to deal with the um flames of war resin kits which i really should do a video on even though they're increasingly hard to come by these days So for the tracks, I'm just again liberating them from the sprue, sanding them down, and since the tracks have uh, lots of gaps, which tend to collect a lot of dust from the sanding, I then, then attack them afterwards with a brush just to try and disrupt some of that. But if that doesn't work, you can go back in and lightly coat the area with um, some cement, and that should dissolve the uh, plastic dust. Anyway, as like with the hull, once I don't do my test fits, I then glue it on, just being careful to try and avoid getting my fingers in the glue, as I frequently do. M1 to do, I suppose. Alright, unfortunately I lost a lot of the video for the rest of the model. Um, right now I'm just fitting the uh, bracket which holds the 17-pounder um, gun in the stowed position for um, train travel presumably, um, or truck travel for that matter. Um, yeah, so that's just basically me just fiddling around with it and just trying to get it exactly right on the model. Um, it's fiddly work and I had to go back to reference photos just to make sure I get it and got it in exactly the right place, but yeah, once it's... Um, in place it sticks down well enough. See that's just me doing the test fit to see how it looks and then going in f in anger. Of course fiddling doing this with tweezers is extremely hard. Anyway moving right along. So yep there are two separate turrets just make sure you've selected the correct pieces and then assembly desired turret. Now this is right about the part where I ran out of footage for this, but needless to say it's pretty much like the rest of the model, just uh, free your components, sand them down, uh, make sure, do a test fit, then do a live fit, and then you're done. 
you can move on to the um, more, you know, I find it at least, more procedural part of painting the model. Okay, so off camera, I gave the model a priming and I used my fairly mid range method to do that, which is an all, all angles layer of Chaos Black followed by a zenithal of Corax White to get a slightly shaded zenithal highlight going, and then I'm just doing the base coat. So I'm not worrying about getting details just right, I'm just doing an all over coat of my base color, which is Russian uniform World War II from Vallejo. Um, yeah, so. This is a very time-consuming step, and I'm, as you can see, I'm using a ratty old brush, which I'm mostly using for its large coverage. So yeah, the idea is to get some, uh, like, seven or eight very thin coats over the entire model, just to establish that base coat. And then we can start working on the individual details, like, I'll again stress that this particular paint job is for the tabletop, not necessarily for winning competitions. Alright, this is going to be our first highlight for the green. I've mixed some of the um, Russian uniform in with some buff to create a slightly um, paler version of our green. So there we've got it. I'll just get that little bit out of the way. And now we can apply some, um, our, well, just some highlights which will probably get lost, but they'll just help start to bring the detail out of the tank. So yeah, usual dry brushing method. Make sure there's barely any left on the brush, as you can see I'm doing now. And then just do a very, very fine um, pass over it, just with the tip of the brush, doing flicking motions across to um, just start catching all of those raised areas. And then, lo and behold, you have had you have a successful um, highlighted tank. Because you don't want to be too rough with dry brushing, otherwise you get smears. You want to find a nice middle ground where you um, catch the edges, but you leave the base color intact mostly, and avoid a lot of that streaking that you often see with a rushed or um, not quite properly done um, dry brush job. Alright, so we're on to detail painting now, and there are a few on these vehicles. So we'll start with the largest one, and the one which I personally loathe the most, which are the tracks. So, how to paint tracks on miniature war games, or even model tanks, varies a lot from person to person. Some people like doing a base coat of a brown and then metallic dry brush and weathering, but which is accurate because, you know, tanks, tank tracks after being driven around in the dirt for like a couple of weeks or months tend to end up looking a bit rusted and worse for wear. But I found that the that black is most aesthetically pleasing to me for one, and two, the Sherman tracks were actually some kind of metal rubber thing, so it's mostly black anyway with just um, sli a slight metal sheen to it, so... Yeah, that's all I really need to do. So basically a layer of black overall. Also, don't forget to paint the actual road wheel portions on the runners black as well. And then um, I'll go back and do some overbrushing with a slightly lighter uh, grayish black to get some slight definition. And then I will highlight the edges of the tracks with some metal just to get that metallic definition. Okay, here we go. Yep, as I mentioned previously, we are just trying to paint in the road wheels, being as careful as we can to um, avoid getting the our paint on the um, on the green parts. But you know, I of course failed because this part is extremely um, pre precise in terms of the work you need to do. But that's fine. Um, there's a part at the end where I go back and fix up my mistakes later on. Okay, now that the tracks are mostly done, we're gonna do the um, tool handles. So, how you actually paint them is largely a matter of, you know, personal taste. Sometimes it's realistic to paint them the same color as the hull because, as a lot of professional scale, well, professional scale modelers, some more experienced scale modelers will know that the um, the tools that are mounted on vehicles are often painted the same color as the vehicle because they are fitted in the factory and then just sprayed over, which you know is 
is fine. You'd want the entire thing to be camouflaged. But for some people, especially me, just painting the tool colors a wooden color to break it up to provide some more visual interest to the tank is certainly ideal. Anyway, you'll notice that I also put a lot of random stowage on these tanks. So um, yeah, that also gives a bit more um, visual interest and variety to what we've got on our model here. So I'm using a fit, well, I'm not using my best brushes for these this project because quite frankly, it's a, I'm, they're just GW layer brushes, which are okay. They're good middle of the road brushes, I find. Um, but yeah, I'm just being very precise, reforming the tip when I need it and just making sure I get the color just on the top of that tool handle. I'm not trying to work it too close to the hull just to avoid um, any mistakes. And besides, that sort of shading will be taken care of when we get to the wash stage for this entire vehicle. Okay, now we've got our first metallic pass for the brighter metallics. Now, how metallic you want to go largely depends on your tastes, but I prefer, since this is meant to be a bit more of a realistic model, to mix Vallejo gunmetal grey with... Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, with black to get a very uh, dull muted metallic, just to simulate the effect of blued metal on, you know, um, profession like industrially produced um, military weapons. Anyway, um, so yeah, basically go, I'm generally painting this on the hull gun, the 50 cal on the roof, and I'll also paint some of the tool parts, um, that, this metallic as well, including the shovel head and the pick head on the hull of the um, Sherman. Okay, um, another piece of stowage I put on these tanks were some um, cloth material type things, in this case some bags and what appears to be a drop cloth or something. I'm not being particularly fancy with these. I'm just going to paint them the same color as, you know, most British infantry webbing is painted, which is uh, Vallejo Green Grey, I believe. So it's a simple case of just putting one coat over a lot of it and then just letting it dry. Uh, simple as that. And there are also some other random crates which don't necessarily aren't necessarily painted the same color as the hull. I'm going to paint those with US dark green, which seems reasonable. I didn't think about it too hard. It's a green color that was probably you know in use by the Allies during World War II, and it looks good enough to just break up the um, visual detail on the tank just a little bit. And in this case, there's only one box. Um, no, I stand corrected there, is that this one box on the back of this particular Sherman hull and all of the ammo cans for the 50 cals are also painted this colour, which I think is a fair approximation of the colour they were painted in real life. And here I'm doing the tracks. Sorry about the bad camera angles, but you know, it, um, as the project went on, it got more and more difficult to remember that there was a camera that I should keep in focus. Anyway, so simple as um, you just basically give it a layer and well, a dry brush over, and then you go back with your base color to just clean up any um, areas you didn't want to have the um, metallic highlight applied to, such as the uh, bogies on the um, running gear of the tank and on the um, hull itself.
And as I mentioned, I went back and cleaned up my mistakes. So yeah, it's just a simple matter of getting some of our Russian uniform on again and just uh, just touching it up where it needs it. Just a quick visual um, check on all of the models just to make sure you've um, got this part squared away for our wash stage, which is imminent. Okay, so I lied. Well, didn't lie, I forgot. Um, so what I did off camera is I took the models outside and I gave them a spray of gloss varnish. Now this is my usual method for doing model for the transfers, but you don't. I've been told you don't necessarily have to do this, though I'm, I'm skeptical. I've got another project where I'm uh, skipping the step and we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so the gloss varnish I've already actually done an entire video on the subject of transfer, so I won't talk too much about it. Just the gloss varnish is useful as an initial, like, is a good surface to apply transfers onto because it's very smooth and it doesn't uh, have a lot of cracks where air can hide behind and thus cause silvering in transfers. So, um, yeah, it just works very well for this sort of um, uh, work, basically. And you may notice it looks very, the entire tank looks very shiny, that's fine. We'll deal with this in later steps. You know, I won't go into too much detail, just, you know, I find, personally, Battlefront transfers are a real pain to get situated because of their, um, well, they take a long time to get soften up in the water there, and um, they're often a pain to get on, and, and tend to be fragile once you get them off. Um, so yeah, as per my uh, vi vi entire video on the subject, look behind um, the tank itself, and you'll see two bottles, Micro Set and Micro Soul. The general rule is you use micro set to prepare the area you want to moisten the area. It's to, meant in theory meant to provide a um, stable surface for the um, transfer, but um, it's not the, definitely not the strongest of the of the pair, so to speak. Now, micro sole that's the good stuff. Basically, what micro sole does is it melts the transfer slightly, so it starts to deform and cre and creep around detail. So it looks, it really gives the effect of a painted on uh, marking rather than um, a sticker, quite frankly. Now, for the sake of expediency, I won't show you all the transfers, but this stage um, was a bit hard because these transfers go directly on top of a nubbly bit on the top of the tank. I think it might be a commander's periscope or something along those lines. Um, and these, obviously, they need to be worked with in order to get them to prop properly adhere around the periscope. So you'll notice at this stage, it's very, like, draped over the periscope. That's fine. What we'll do is we'll uh, dampen it down and wait for it to dry, and then the subsequent layers of micro sole will start to get it to conform around the um, commander's periscope. Now, this was only partially effective because there was still a lot of air trapped under there, um, basically 24 hours after my first little coat of micro sole. So what I did is I went back with my hobby knife and pricked the transfer a little bit, just so the sole could work itself in behind the transfer, and then um, it properly adhered the um, transfer to the um, periscope. Anyway, so this is basically once the um, initial coat, the transfers are dry. I applied about four or five layers of this, the microsol, over a period of like a day or two, just to make sure those transfers were well and truly melted onto the hull of the vehicle. This is just to basically make it really adhere to the vehicle. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much the process. Now, the final stage actually is to... Um, to give the entire model, once all the transfers have been thoroughly dried, say a day at least, I, well, a day to be safe, though you can probably do it in a bit shorter time frame, I personally wouldn't risk it, um, you give them another layer of the gloss varnish just to seal them in, so our subsequent layers do not damage the transfers. Anyway, uh, moving right along. So, I forgot to actually record the process of applying the wash to the tank, so I'll just talk about it. The product I used was MIG um, 
dark brown wash, or dark wash rather. Um, thinned with a little bit of Artist's Odorless Thinner, just to make sure it's not too aggressive. And then I just gave the entire vehicle an all over color. This is after we our second layer of gloss varnish to protect the transfers. Now, you want to let this dry, I think, for at least a day, preferably two. Um, the thing you'll notice is when you handle it, this stuff, even after a couple of days worth of drying, will still start to rub off with significant like uh, manipulation. So that's the ideal state you want it at. You don't want to actually use any thinner when it starts to when it comes time to remove this wash. This stuff will basically buff out and leave our shaded vehicle. I'll show you how in a second. All right, I think I got this slightly around the wrong way, but here's our first um, hull. So as you can see, I've basically cleaned off most of it already, and now I'm using um, a cotton bud or a Q-tip if you're an American to work my wet way into the actual like gaps and creases to start removing as much of the wash as I can, leaving only the very deepest recesses the uh, original color. So yeah, as you can see, I also used a bit of paper towel just to um to start buffing out the hull. And with this turret, you can see the sort of initial process of getting the majority of the wash removed and then using a cotton bud to focus into more specific areas to, to start, you know, um, basically re-exposing our original paint job. Um, you will notice the tank is still very gloss, though it has been dulled a little bit by this product. That's fine, we're going to kill the gloss um, as a finishing step once we're done clear clearing off this wash. You will go through a lot of cotton buds during this step, and I recently bought like a case of 500, so that should last me for a while. Anyway, so, uh, yep, these, these are the hulls in various states. Um, yep, that's the one of the finished ones. And then the turrets. So I don't know what I was going for there, but yep. Um, so yeah, this is a basic project process for doing the hull. You just first buff, it, buff out as much of the color as you can, and of course, it, since you're not using thinner, it won't run into any of the details and remove it there but it will stay in the details, thus providing um, our definition for the paint. And once we've done our initial pass, of course, we get our cotton buds out and we start cleaning up the details some more, just working it into all of the more um, slightly harder to reach areas, basically. Okay, so uh, we're done and we're going to apply some weathering to the tank using um, Vallejo Model Color Flat Earth. Wait, just, oh yeah, and one stage I didn't recall was also putting down about two layers of a, in a lacquer flat varnish over the tank just to kill the, um, the gloss from the um, previous steps. Now, I did make a mistake in applying this um, in weather where it caused some frosting to occur in the recesses. I tried to hide a, as much of this as I could with a... Um, a dark liner product from Tamiya and it was mostly successful so again be careful when you apply your product on outside like your sprays and stuff because the ambient ambient temperature and humidity will affect the final result anyway so for this um, layer of weathering all I'm doing is I'm just putting a layer of Vallejo flat earth on the running gear and lower hull of the tank just to simulate the tank having been driving through dirt and dust and kicking it up so I'm Basically, yeah, focusing it around the running gear and um, the front of the hull and also moving it up a little bit more around the back of the hull where it is likely that the tracks would have been kicking dust up further up the hull as this tank, you know, drives through the through the European countryside, kicking up mud and dirt and, dirt and um, so forth. Anyway, uh, moving on. Now, our final stage is to give it a bit more of a dusty effect, and I'm still a bit dubious as to whether I even like this or not, but it seems to look okay. Like, I give the entire tank a very, very fine dry brush of buff overall. Now, the purpose of this is purely to pick out some of the highlights and to give the tank a slightly more dusty look. So this basically goes over everything, and it will conceal a lot of color, which, you know comes with a territory but it does also tend to unify all of the colors on the model which I think is really really useful for making it um, the entire thing hang together anyway so as you can see I'm just basically doing an overbrush and 
Be careful with overbrushing the gun turret because it tends to really come out on the turret and you'll see in a later stage of this video I go back and reapply some um, of our mid-green color, our Russian, Russian uniform World War II, to the um, like barrel on the turret just to remove some of that over excessive dry brushing. That's me like with my fingers trying to remove some of it. Anyway, this really does come out well on the hull though, where it should mostly be shown off. And yeah, it just picks up, highlights the the, the uh, edges on the hull, the running gear, and just gives it a bit of a more of a dusty and worn look, which is you know good for an armored vehicle. That's presumably been in some service. So yep, um, again, with dry brushing and weathering, less is definitely more. You just want to get that um, dry brush happening and just the edges picked. You don't want it to start to dominate your other colors. So yeah, this is definitely the part where your final result really starts to pop. And um, yeah, overall, this is a fairly good way for batching vehicles, I also I found. Um, oh yeah, and that's me just cleaning up the turrets. It's like, it's very um, systematic. Um, it can be staged, and I've actually got another bunch of Cromwells and Universal Carriers coming up the line um, after these guys for my Flames of War revitalization project. Anyway, on to the finished result. Now, a thing I'd like to note is that I haven't actually done any of the crew that are sticking out of the hatches yet. I'm just doing them all separately in another batch, but this is pretty much what they look like on the tabletop, and I have to say, I really wish I could do could have done this like 10 years ago because these look absolutely excellent compared to most vehicles you see at tournaments. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with the way these guys have turned out, and I like how simple and easy the uh, Flames of War plastics are. And that's, I think that's pretty much it for tonight, this video, or tonight as well, so have a good one.